Hello and welcome to another Parallel Project Training podcast. These podcasts are linked to the APM PMQ syllabus for exams starting in September 2024. My name's Ruth Phillips and I'm here with Lisa Regan, who is one of Parallel's senior project trainers. Welcome to the podcast, Lisa. Hi, Ruth. Hi. So today's topic is integrated planning. That's an exciting and very important topic for us to talk about. I always say, if you don't like planning, project management, you're in the wrong job. (laughs) Yes, this is our bread and butter, isn't it? It really is. So let's have a look at the syllabus. The learning objective says that we've got to understand that integrated planning is all about incorporating multiple plans and processes into this integrated project management plan or PMP as we might call it. Now, before we start talking in more detail about the PMP, Lisa, could you just dispel these myths about the difference between a plan and a schedule? Because I think sometimes people get them a little bit confused. Yeah, in the APM's world, when they use this phrase, the PMP, the project management plan, they mean a whole host of documents. They don't just mean the Gantt chart, which is what the schedule is about really. So tasks over time is is the Gantt chart, is the schedule. When the APM say PMP, they mean lots of different documents. That clears things up because sometimes people say, oh, here's my plan for doing this. And they just present us those activities, that timeline, as you say. What we're talking about here, and I think probably the clues in the word integrated is a whole suite of plans and processes that go together to tell us what we're going to do on our project. Okay, so our first learning outcome then is to know the format for an effective integrated project management plan and its typical content. So let's talk about, first of all, the format of that plan. What, What is it? So, like I said, collection of documents. I always think of it as being a huge folder stacked up with everything that you're going to need to run your project. We, we, we can split the contents in two ways because it is a huge list. For starters, I think a nice way of splitting it down is to go through a list of what do you call the memory joggers, the things like the who, the when, the what, the how much. So for example, the what in the PMP, we're talking about the scope. So the WBS, the work breakdown structure and the product breakdown structure, any kind of specifications that you're talking about, any kind of constraints. So what is it you're going to deliver and how are you going to deliver it? The how much comes down Mm -hmm. to the budget, doesn't it? So any cost breakdown structure, any earned value details would go in there. Uh, The when, I'm I'm going around the the whole list, the when is the Gantt chart for me. So it's, again, tasks against time, the schedule that we just talked about. The who would come from another structure, wouldn't it? The organisation breakdown structure. And then you could map that against your work breakdown structure to come up with your RAM, your responsibility yeah. assignment matrix. It's a huge long list, isn't it? <laughs> <What's> <laughs> There's a, really a lot in here. The main part for me is the how. So the oh. how is the plan, so the quality plan, the risk plan. It sounds a bit twee, this, but I say if it's got plan at the end of it, it's probably in the PMP. Yeah. <laughs> so that the quality plan, the risk plan, the change plan. Yeah. Also any processes, change control process, mm. risk management process, it's in the PMP. So the how for me is the biggest part yeah. of it. Yeah. But we've also got the why, which comes from the business case. So that justification, it, why was this project set up in the first place? What else have we got? Oh, we've got the where, haven't we? So, for example, if you're running your project across multiple locations, even yeah. across multiple continents, you would have some detail. This part is taking place here. This part is taking place overseas in that way. Yeah. The final one for me is the agreement. We'll talk okay. about it, I think, in a short time. The agreement yeah. is the deployment baseline. When you move into deployment, that baseline is where you start from. And anything yeah. that changes has got to go through the change process in, in the yeah. linear life cycle. Apologies for that being a long list, Ruth. It's all about answering those questions, isn't it? It's this single central source of information about how we're going to execute the, the project. Who's responsible for developing this and where does that information come from? PMP, it's all the project manager's responsibility. So, Oh, it would be. Yeah, that's all the work to do. (laughs) We talked in another podcast about the business case being the sponsor's Mm. responsibility, put together in the concept phase. In a similar way, the PMP comes under the remit of the project manager and it's all put together in the definition phase. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where all the detailed plans are put together. Just another quick way of thinking about how you could slice the information in the PMP. So another way of thinking about it is live documents 
and reference documents. The APM call them uh, policies and procedures. Yeah. yeah. So they, they are the things that are on the shelf and you'd only look at them once in a blue moon. But the schedules and the logs, these are the things that were updating as the project progresses. Things yeah. like the risk register, the Gantt chart, live documents. And yeah. I, I like that. I'm an engineer. I like that. I'm either I, one or the other. I, I've, I've heard it referred to as static and dynamic. As oh, well, like but that. It's that, yeah. it's that. It's that the same kind of split, isn't it? The policies and procedures are the things that are more set yeah. in stone. And as you said, like yeah. the reference documents. So if I need to know how I escalate an issue, let's say, yeah. then I can go and refer to that. But if I need yeah. to see what the latest action on a particular issue is, then that's the live information, the dynamic information that's changing. So I go into the issue register for that. That's a really good split of thinking about the contents of the PMP. That's right. It's just a different way of slicing, if that makes sense. It's the yeah. same information. These are the documents that I use day in, day out. Okay, these are the documents that I might refer to. So the syllabus says the format for the effective integrated project management plan. Can you give me some examples of what this actually looks like to people? You know, how, how do they recognise that this is a PMP? That's a question, isn't it? Does it mean electronic format or paper format? I'm thinking about all of the different ways that we could put this information together on different right. projects. Right. Yeah, because for some projects, 100% everything is kept electronically, mm. isn't it? And mm. there's no there's no problem with that at all. But if you're dealing with working in more traditional setups, they might still keep paper copies. Even these days, yeah. they might still keep paper copies of things. Or you might keep, let me just think of other examples, recordings and meetings and things like that, perhaps. Again, I think it depends on the size of the project, the yeah. complexity yeah whether you're working with lots of different external partners or whether this is just an internal project. Yeah. I've often used project management tools as well that do some of these things for me. When they say know the format, it's quite a difficult thing to pin down really, isn't it? It kind of it could be any depends. Yeah, project dependent, I like that. I'm going to pin down on this word effective here as well because that's the key word for me we can produce all of this information but what makes it effective well for me the fact that it's a communication tool i come back to that with the pmp because it's all about keeping stakeholders involved isn't it and having that robust pmp is the way to do that that's really interesting that you've pinned it down to communication because I, I, I never forget somebody said to me that if you don't know the reason why you're putting all of this information together, how it's going to be communicated, it's just administration. You're yeah. not using it effectively. And I think that's really important for us to think about. I've heard people talk about the PMP being the contract in inverted mm. commas in the same way that the business case is the contract between the sponsor and the organisation. Yeah. Yeah. The PMP is literally you saying to the sponsor, this is what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to yeah. deliver. And please check back and, and I'll give you my updates compared yeah. to this information. So that probably moves us on to the second learning outcome then, which is understanding the importance of producing yep. an integrated project management plan. What would yep. happen on our project if we didn't have one, if we said to ourselves, this is way too much hard work. <laughs> oh my goodness, chaos. chaos. <laughs> yeah. Spiral into chaos. That's yeah. what would happen, wouldn't it? Because it's that, what do they call it? Single source of truth. Yeah. yeah. These days, mostly the, the documents are kept online and at any time anyone can go and refer to them and say, okay, where are we up to? Okay, what's happening next? Yeah. yeah. To yeah. make sure that everybody gets that same message. Particularly the project environment that you've got a temporary team, you know, it's this unique yeah. transient endeavour and you've yeah. got people that are joining and leaving and yeah. coming in, doing one yeah. particular piece of work and things like that. Yeah. And it's so easy for us to lose that control. So without having that library of information that people can go and look at, what did we agree to do? Why did we agree to do it? When's it all meant to be happening? And if things change, to, to keep it updated in, in that way. Otherwise, we, we quickly spiral into chaos. I like that phrase, spiraling into chaos. So just uh, one last thing then. You mentioned yeah. we use the PMP as a deployment baseline. What does yeah. that mean and, and, and what does it mean in practice? Sometimes people see that and they go, oh, I've never heard that phrase mm. before. To me, it, it isn't rocket science. It's the baseline in the deployment phase of the life cycle. So when we talk about something being a baseline, it's a line in the sand. It's a reference level. So how do you know how well you're doing on a project? So you're in week three. Someone comes to you and says, where are we up to? How do you know what you were supposed to be doing in week three? You look back to the detail in the PMP and you say, OK, by week three, we we're supposed to be, for example, 20 percent along with this particular task. Where are we up to? So you can monitor and you can control. You can say, 
okay, we, we're not far enough on. Let's put some actions in place. Oh, we're on track. Everything's good. So the PMP as a deployment baseline, number one, it's the line in the sand, but you should be regularly reviewing yeah. that to make yeah. sure that, because like you just said, Ruth, if you don't keep up all the, the configuration side of the PMP, one change, pebble in the pond, and the whole thing is, is gone into chaos. If you've not updated all those documents yeah. that relate to each other, changes come along and making a change to, for example, the Gantt chart might mean you've got to go further back and go, oh, hang on, what's the implications of this? So understanding all those linkages and you're making sure that they're all up to date is a key part of the PMP as a deployment baseline. It's that one source of truth. It's like that snapshot that's taken yeah. that we can always go back to and then say this is what we plan to do this is how we thought it was all going to pan out how are we doing against that it's your yes. yardstick and with the pmp you can use it to support your audits this is the evidence because it's always what's the thing they say about audits it's always can you show me can you yeah. show me where do you go for that information you go to the pmp so it's not only the deployment baseline it's not only a communication tool but those are the two main things but you can use it as, as a basis for your audit it will send you in the right direction to get the right information. So that's the backbone of the yeah, management yeah. of the project. Yeah. So when we're doing reviews, all of that information we need, we'll be comparing it to that baseline. We'll be looking in the PMP to see what's going on, what status yeah. we are now. It's absolutely fundamental, isn't it, to the management of our project? Ab absolutely. Key in my mind is that business case for the sponsor, PMP for the project manager fundamental yeah. it's a nice cascade isn't it the the sponsor says this is what what this project's about and why we're doing it and i'm going to deliver these outcomes and benefits and then the project manager comes along and says okay here's my pmp and this is how i'm going to manage it for you that's it it's like thanks for the overview this is the meat on yeah. the bones this is yeah. what's going to happen sometimes even day by day it gets down to that level of detail doesn't it what's going to happen on the project we've had a really great discussion about integrated planning and the pmp we've looked at format, how to make it an effective set of information, looked at its typical contents, where it comes from, responsibilities, and then we've talked about the importance of producing it and this concept of the deployment baseline. Quite a lot within that. Okay, thanks. Thanks Enjoy. very much. Thanks, Thank Lisa. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.